Welcome to the magical and extraordinary world of radical design, the very antithesis of conventional thought. What we have here is a failure, an absolute abject failure to comply with the norm, the prosaic, the mundane, the conventional, square, utilitarian type box that has no other redeeming feature than an ability to actually contain objects. This baby moves outside of the box and into something more flowing, more sculptural and more artistic. My great inspiration in life is nature, the natural world, a movement within the natural world. And I use it as my reference book on a day-to-day -day basis. In the studio where Michelangelo served his apprenticeship, emblazoned on the walls in enormous letters were the words, Nature is the great teacher, the perfect guide. And I think that is so true. Straight lines do not exist in nature. They're an invention of man to aid and facilitate mass production techniques. They are incongruous to the human spirit. In design, when I use naturally occurring, free-flowing lines, somehow the designs always seem to work out on a human scale. They're easy to harmonise with. We actually evolved in forests, we came out of the forest surrounded by beautiful, naturally flowing shapes, and I think that's why when curvature is used in design, it seems to contain a far greater humanity than square, boxy shapes with corners that are more at home in a dentist's surgery. This is made 100% by hand, and what really bugs me in life is that everybody professes to make things by hand across all genres, not only the, the furniture making industry. If you go in your local supermarket, you'll find hand-picked tomatoes, uh, hand-cooked crisps, handmade soap. It's absolutely absurd. But manufacturers know that this, this term handmade has a beautiful connotation to, to integrity and honesty. And so it's used on an industrial scale because it's profitable. But I think in this, in this Machiavellian world we live in, I think that deceit is naturally revealing, but only when people are presented with the real thing. This is made to the nth degree, not only in terms of the aesthetic, but also the constructional elements. So I think what we'll do here, we'll go on a close-up tour and have a look at some of the finer points. So let's, let's move in and check out the... The detail. I believe attention to detail is absolutely paramount in quality design. So let's just take a look at this, this layer section first of all. Okay, there, let's consider the panel first of all. The panel, when I designed this, I, I knew it would be almost impossible to copy on a machine. So it would be left alone by the mass production boys. It's difficult because from the periphery of the panel to the central spine, it actually slopes up very gently. So it's incredibly complex and difficult to make on a machine. You can see they're handmade wooden hinges, made entirely by hand. They work beautifully and smoothly and will last a lifetime and beyond. And of course, without any built-in obsolescence. There we have a hand-carved sculptural handle allowing the user intimate contact with the wood. It's a truly delightful feeling to be able to physically open the door by putting your hand inside the wood, rather than using some superficial, silly little knob that's been stuck on. And as we climb up, we have a heavy sycamore top. This wood is fiddleback sycamore. And it was traditionally used in the making of musical instruments like violins. And if you look at the back of a violin, particularly on the neck, you'll see the beautiful rays. Of course, they, they stain the wood dark. I prefer to leave woods natural. And very rarely use finishes at all. I think they're a real misnomer. I think you get far more life and feeling without finishes. And I think it's far more contemporary not to stain wood, uh, particularly with a white wood like this, it gives it a very airy feel and a feeling of space. The, the, the carving, as we climb up, we look at the carving, 
in the past, carvings were always used as an incidental form of decoration. In my work, I use the high relief carvings as the principal part of the narrative. And in this case, the vine, as it slowly winds its way up through the door, it's responsible for the movement within the piece of work. And as we approach the top, you'll notice in the top right-hand corner, the vine disappears and reappears at the top left-hand portion of the frieze. This gives the illusion of continual movement and drama within the piece of work. The depth of the relief on the leaves is 16 mil and on the bunch of grapes 100 millimetres. This incredible depth, I go this to this sort of depth to get the feeling in the work and I undercut all the leaves too so you get a beautiful shadow line and this makes it look as if the grapevine is actually bursting off the surface of the wood and really adds to the life and movement within the piece. So the extra effort involved in, in going to that sort of depth for me is certainly worth it because I get so much more life in the piece of work. And as we come down, we can see again the vine disappearing and winding its way and reappears again in the top of the door. We'll move in a little closer here because I want to look at the tool marks. You should be able to see the tool marks. There you go, I think you can see those. The tool marks in the background. Everything is carved from the solid, nothing is stuck on. It's all hacked out of the solid. And I think the tool marks really, really add to the natural appearance of the piece of work. You'll notice there in the top left portion of the door some beautiful figure. That's what I term marble sycamore. And it's very similar to the marble I use in my sculptural work. Sycamore is a fantastic choice for curved work like this because it's relatively grainless so the shapes I actually put in to the wood actually appear. It's very readable if you like rather than having a crazy grain wood where the shapes I put in would not be able to be perceived because of the nature of the grain. So it is a good choice. And there you have it, chaos.